podcasting from the Star Group, home of the iconic Dressable Lions. This is Beyond the Known, the podcast that takes you a step beyond what you know about business. I'm your host, Paul M. Newberger, president of the Star Group. On today's episode of Beyond the Known, our guest is Alicia Kelch, founder and CEO of REM Occupational Health and Wellness. Alicia, welcome to the program today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, it's always wonderful to have such a wonderful friend of the Star Group here with us today, eager to have this conversation and introduce you and your organization to the world here to some degree. One of the questions I have to really kind of get us going here, so you are the founder of REM, Occupational Health and Wellness, as well as the CEO. How did you go about starting your business by chance? So I think a common theme in healthcare nowadays is, unfortunately, we've moved away from really focusing on our patients. And I think a lot of medical people can agree with me that sometimes you feel like a glorified button clicker. You're stuck behind your computer with your electronic health record. You know, you're given only 10, 15 minutes to spend time with your patient and address all of their healthcare concerns and problems. And that's a real issue in healthcare because how can you appropriately sit with your patient and discuss all their concerns and problems in such a short time frame, especially while your medical provider is pressed to document all this information in their electronic health records so quickly. So it came to me to start REM mostly out of that desire to really provide patient care that was very intentional and it was very compassionate and to really build that relationship again with your medical provider where you'd have sufficient time to build a relationship, build trust, and to really dive deep into their medical problems and provide sound, manageable healthcare plans with patients. So interestingly, when I was trying to think of a name for the business, you know, you search the federal database of all the business, you know, names and all of the quote, good ones were taken. And I remember the night sitting there with my husband saying, gosh, I just, I really can't think of a name for the business. And he said, well, what is your real reason for starting the business? Like, what is your purpose? And I said, well, my purpose is to provide intentional, purposeful, empathetic medicine and care to patients. And he said, well, why don't you think of a word that plays off a purpose? And so interestingly, REM is Latin for purpose. So our business model is healthcare with a purpose and really engaging with employees in the on-site setting to increase accessibility to patient care and healthcare with a reduction in overall cost to the employer and the employee. So it's obviously not an easy thing to start a business. I mean, you're going outside of your comfort zone. You're taking calculated risks. I think sometimes society glorifies entrepreneurs, rightfully so, but all you really see, it's like that iceberg theory, if you're familiar with that. All you really see is the The small, yeah, exactly, the small tip above the water. I want what Mark Cuban has. I want what Elon Musk has. But what you don't see is the 98% of the iceberg submerged under the water, the sleepless nights, the second mortgage on the home whatever the case may be. So what would you say were some of your earlier challenges in getting this business off the ground? And how were you able to successfully overcome those? Right. I'm a healthcare provider. So in all my years of medical training and schooling, they don't give medical people financial education. And they certainly don't do any type of business courses unless you're taking them on your own. So probably for me, the biggest struggle was the financial and the business aspect of it, which thankfully I have an amazing mentor who also is a healthcare provider who transitioned into business owner. And she's got three very successful businesses in Florida. And so she served really as my great business mentor and leader and help me through some of those early struggles because if you're bleeding and not breathing right I'm your girl but figuring out some of the actual nitty-gritty business stuff was probably my biggest struggle and I'm you know thankfully really proud that we were a successful business the first year you know with being able to stay afloat during a pandemic and actually flourish You may have just answered my follow-up question. Thank you for stealing my thunder, by the way. It's almost like you've done this before. That's okay. We're just that connected. We are. The synergy is amazing. Yes, that's (laughs) phenomenal. My follow-up question was going to be, was there a moment where you thought, hey, this is going to work, whether it be a one-time event or whether it be kind of a a collection of favorable outcomes that have started to happen? We talked about the challenges, but what was that moment when you started to say, you know, I think we got something here. You know, I think this is really going to work. 
Yep, I can actually pinpoint the day. I work with a very large food manufacturer in Milwaukee County, and thankfully they were one of my on-sites at just a couple hours a week providing on-site care. And unfortunately, they had gotten shut down early in the pandemic because of an outbreak at that facility. So I remember the day, it was a Wednesday afternoon at 2.30 in the afternoon, and their general manager called me and said, hey, I need to have several hundred people COVID tested by tomorrow to reopen by Monday. Can you do it? And I said, of course I can do it. And I hung up the phone and thought, oh my gosh, what did I just commit to? But in less than 12 hours, I hired two staff members and I got all the lab supplies together and we tested all 300 people on that Thursday and the business successfully reopened by Monday. So from there, REM just blew up because then they shared my information with all the other big, you know, food manufacturers and local manufacturing facilities. And we really took off after that. So I started REM with just me a year and a half ago, and now we're almost at 40 employees. Well, that is some rapid acceleration, my friend. Good for you. I'm sure there's been growing pains along the way. Going from zero to 60 almost overnight is not easy, but I think that's a testament to your business savvy, your leadership, your entrepreneurial sense. So that is wonderful to hear that. So this would be a good segue then too. I mean, one of the things that I like about you, one of the things that we love about your organization here at the Star Group is you're a humble salt of the earth person. You're a very humble organization, yet you do amazingly good work. So this might be a hard question to answer when you got to toot your own horn a little bit, but what would you say have been some of the main reasons for your success? How have you been able to do this and what could other individuals that are aspiring for a similar level of success learn from your example? I think you already mentioned it there, but I, I try to just stay as humble and as real as possible. So I don't pretend to know everything because I don't. When I make mistakes, I own up to them and absolutely try to redirect and learn from that. I think at the end of the day, just maintaining the motto of the organization, which is to provide purposeful, intentional health care is really at our core what makes us successful. The relationships we've been able to establish with patients at our on-site clinics has been amazing. I mean, we get emails and phone calls from employees who have seen us at our on sites, whether it be for acute care, or we were there doing their respirator fit testing or vaccination clinic, who are just so amazed at the amount of time and compassion that we are able to provide to them. Because unfortunately, it is something that is missing sometimes in healthcare nowadays, when you go to you know, a hospital setting or a freestanding clinic. We've been able to successfully establish these relationships and bring really great patient care to these patients with the added benefit of a huge cost reduction to the employers. And so it's a double win for everyone that people are getting really great care and they talk about that. You know, they talk about it to their friends, their families, and the businesses talk about it between each other. And I think that's been what has been most impactful. Yeah, lots of organizations, as you well know, have a variety of challenges on an ongoing daily basis, even before 2020, even before COVID, even before all the disruption that ensued accordingly. But with respect to health and wellness, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that your typical run-of-the-mill organization will face? Right. I think the biggest challenges we experience is typically in the older patient population, so the aging workforce, as well as the manufacturing setting. You know, manufacturing presents a lot of challenges on its own for those individuals because they're oftentimes working shifts early in the morning, late at night. Sometimes it's not always easy to access health care. And statistically, there are more men working in these environments. And it's also statistically known that men don't seek health care as often as, say, women do. So we see those two challenges in these various workplaces. So by bringing the healthcare to them accessible at different hours of the day to help accommodate their you know, shift work, but also make it accessible to them where they previously maybe wouldn't go to a medical provider, it's really been phenomenal, the response. So one of my companies, 50% of their workforce did not have a primary care provider, and we were able to half that number in just one year. So half of those people who didn't have a primary started utilizing the on-site clinic. And so 
that's a huge number of people who previously were walking around with undiagnosed medical conditions that now have appropriate care and attention. One of the things we love, and you've kind of started going down this path, but one of the things we love at Beyond the Known is a good story. So Mm -hmm. what would you say has been one of your proudest accomplishments since founding REM Occupational Health and Wellness? Maybe a success story, something that really makes you go, you know what, what we're doing is important and what we're doing really matters. That would definitely be with the COVID vaccines. And we've had so many great heartwarming success stories that that has probably been the most heartwarming and profound to just see some of these older folks who have not seen their grandkids in a year where they haven't seen their loved ones because they're out of state and just really seeing the hope and optimism in their eyes to get their lives back. I mean, it's just gut-wrenching. And if you are not crying in the room with them, there's something wrong with you. Because just to see their tears of joy that they get, they've been calling it a gift. I mean, to me, it's science and it's a vaccine and it's a way to keep them and the community healthy. But to them, it's truly a gift. And that has been so amazing to see people travel from as far as Green Bay to come down to my clinic here in Big Ben to get a vaccine and just be so eternally grateful. So that has been probably my proudest, best moment with REM so far. Yeah, that's powerful stuff for sure. And I I can definitely see why that would fill your heart with so much joy. I know that there, and it's been widely publicized, that there's been some issue getting our hands on vaccines, distributing vaccines. And again, there's just a lot of news stories that come at you in very rapid succession. So I guess a multi-part question, A, how frustrating has that been to some degree to maybe not give out as many vaccines as you'd like? And B, because you're on the ground floor and you're seeing this from a different lens than we are what are some of the reasons that we haven't been able to disseminate as many vaccines as we otherwise would like to do right so to the first part of your question we are slowly seeing a ramp up it's extremely frustrating to week to just not know so every monday the state sends me an allocation request survey which i have to basically request how many vaccines I want for the next two weeks based off of the phases we're vaccinating. So of course I request as many as I can possibly request. And it varies from week to week. You know, we had some weeks there where I was getting maybe a quarter of what I asked. And then last week I got over what I asked. Now this coming week I'm getting, it looks like somewhere right in the middle of what I asked for. So it still varies and that's incredibly frustrating not just for planning purposes, but because again, the whole goal is to get vaccines in people's arms. From what I've heard, it's all stemming more on a federal level that the federal government is the one in charge of allocating the vaccines to the various states. And so the state only gets what they get. And then they have to decide who they're allocating it to as well. So I think it's a lot of really difficult decisions being made on so many levels. And hopefully it'll continue to improve, which I have seen week to week there's better communication, there's better transit of the vaccine. That's part of the reason I can't be with you there today in person is because my vaccine shipment was supposed to come this afternoon. And early this morning, I got an email that said it's supposed to be here sometime before 1030. And I have to be here for it. So I apologize, I'm not there in person. But just again, one of the many ongoing changes that are always going on with vaccines. Well, if you're not going to be able to join us in person, I think the best reason possible is because you got to stay back and collect this COVID vaccine shipment. I think that's a good problem to have, and and we'll certainly forgive you this time. Next time, no, but this time, yes. I think that makes sense. Sounds good. As I alluded to earlier, there's just this constant influx of information. I mean, emails and webinars and news stories and stuff on TV. I mean, sometimes it's just information overload. I mean, you don't really know what to believe. You don't know which way is up. There's so much stuff coming at us. So that's what's kind of nice to have you here. I mean, you can cut through the clutter. You can just kind of give us an open, clear-eyed assessment. So with respect to updates, I mean, what updates, if any, do you have for us with respect to on-site testing and vaccinations, as well as how this is impacting the companies you work closely with? Right. So The first part, we, well, I'll go to the last part. It is impacting businesses 
both negatively and positively. So those organizations who have been able to get vaccines, it's been very positive to keeping their workforce healthy and safe and providing the goods and services that they've been doing. So, you know, with the healthcare organizations, especially the ones who are not affiliated with a large hospital system, it was really great to be able to give them their vaccines so that they can function and still provide care to their patients. I think it's important that people recognize some of the misconceptions about the vaccine. It's really important to read this great link, and I can share it with you afterwards from World Health Organization, which has a lot of the common myths and misconceptions about the vaccine. You know, the common ones we've been hearing that it's microchipped or that this was cooked up in a lab overnight, which all contrary to popular belief, you know, mRNA vaccines have actually been in the works since early 2000. So it is not new technology. The only reason they didn't take off sooner with the first SARS epidemic was because SARS went away. So there really wasn't a need to continue working on a vaccine for these types of respiratory illnesses if the illness wasn't around anymore. So just some great things like that to really help educate the public And to get their information, again, from sound sources like CDC and World Health, one of the comments I hear often from people is that, you know, the information is always changing, even on CDC. And I think it's important for people to recognize that this is the first time we've all experienced in our lifetime a global pandemic. So as the CDC and World Health is collecting new data and information, they are adjusting their recommendation. So we, again, just need to be adaptable and patient with these groups that are trying, again, to give us the most accurate information. And then lastly, with COVID vaccine, I think it's important for people to recognize that, you know, it is 95% effective, the Pfizer and Moderna, that leaves 5% chance that you could still get COVID to some degree, and that we do still have to keep wearing masks because of that. And to also, again, encourage mask usage in the general public, it's best to wear one to encourage others to wear one. Yeah, some really good advice there. So somebody listening to this says, you know what, I want to make this available to my employees. I want to make sure that we can help facilitate this. We talk about health and wellness and corporate culture doing right by your employees. What would be the process involved for starting something like this? Do you guys just provide this with anybody that asks? Are certain situations given higher priority? I mean, what does that look like if somebody's interested in working with you for these services? The best way to contact us if you're a business or an organization is to contact me directly via phone or email, which all of my information is on my website. From there, we determine what type of business organization you are and if you are in the appropriate phase to be vaccinated. So what often people don't recognize is that I had to sign a contractual agreement with the state agreeing that because I'm a DHS vaccinator, I will only vaccinate people in the recommended phases. So we get inquiries all the time from various businesses and employers who want to host an on-site vaccination clinic, but we have to wait until it is your recommended phase. We do require a certain minimum for us to come on site. Otherwise, we do have a freestanding clinic now where we can service some of the smaller businesses that maybe don't meet the minimum requirement for an on-site. So to recap, if you're a business, best way is to just contact me via email or phone to talk about if your group is eligible yet. And even if you're not eligible yet, we already start planning. So we start getting head counts, we get you out our consent form for people to start reviewing, and we already start planning for a potential on-site clinic. So it's never too early to reach out and start planning for that. For individuals, we do have on our website now an online sign-up. So every week I post available appointments for the appropriate phases now. So again, healthcare and 65 and older right now. And they can check daily to see what the appointments are for the week. And it's all based off of how many vaccines I get for that week. So individuals can just go right on my website and they can click the link to book an online appointment. Would you say we've seen the worst from COVID or is it still going to get worse before it gets better? Well, I'm an eternal optimist, so I'm going to say that we have already seen the worst, and I am hopeful we are on the home stretch to, you know, going back to, quote, normal, whatever normal might look like after this. So we've been spending a lot of our time together discussing COVID for obvious reasons. I mean, this is all over the place. It's what everybody's talking about. It's something that a lot of individuals are concerned about, but 
COVID isn't all your organization cares about. And in fact, I think that you were kind of thrust into this role. I mean, REM provides additional services for organizations outside of COVID vaccinations, outside of your expertise in this area. So can we talk about that for a little bit? What else does REM do and what other value offerings do you give to organizations that want to partner with you in some capacity? Right. So really what distinguishes us from any of the other on-site programs in and around Milwaukee is that we provide any and all services on-site. So we pride ourselves on being able to do even on-site x-rays and imaging. So if you have a worker that we're seeing at our on-site clinic who tripped and fell, they hurt their arm, we have a mobile imaging unit that will come into the business and do x-rays right there. So not only is it providing convenient and quality care to the injured worker, but also it comes at a huge cost reduction instead of sending them out to the urgent care or the hospital-based systems. So we do on-site acute care. So acute care would include your blood pressure checks, your coughs, your colds, your sore throats, injuries, illnesses. We also do health and wellness insofar as people's yearly physicals, their biometric screening. We do on-site respirator fit testing physicals. We're capable of doing even on-site DOT. Another proportion of our business really does focus on the post-offer employment physical as well as post-offer drug screening. So we really have a huge menu of services where employers can kind of pick from the menu. So they don't have to pick one thing. They could pick you know, several things, or if they only want to pick one thing, they can. So we really pride ourselves on being a full service on-site provider with the goal of having your employee never having to leave work. Because again, once they go into an off-site clinic or hospital system, they're subject to a lot of the heavy fees that are associated with that. So it goes back to our business model of wanting to provide quality, good health care at a reduction to the employer. Well, let's real quick just take a minute or two to get to know Alicia the person a little Mm -hmm. bit better. Obviously, you're doing amazing stuff in the workforce. You're touching lives, and you and your 40 employees are those frontline heroes that we hear about on an ongoing regular basis. And boy, as a society, we are extremely grateful for all the contributions that you guys are making. So definitely want to make sure that we emphasize that. I know you you are a person of faith. Mm -hmm. How does your faith play a role in your professional life and how does your faith sustain you during trying challenging times like this? Gosh, it has been certainly a test and a challenge. I think we all struggle with uncertainty in this time, especially heightened during this time. And I think for me personally, it's just been very important for me to rest on my faith and to just raise it up and really just trust, you know, really put my faith in God and trust that I'm being led down the right path and I'm helping the right people and I'm getting connected in the right way and that this path I'm on is the right one. So me personally, I just rest a lot in my faith and just trying to trust and believe. And that's really hard. Every day I start my day with a daily devotional. It's kind of the the kickstart to my day. You know, I had read one time, the first thing you do in the morning, it really kind of sets the tone of your day. And so that's why I try to start that day very intentional and positive. So yeah, just really trying to remain optimistic and trust. Yeah, no, we appreciate you sharing that. And when you talk about the things that make you you, when we asked you Mm -hmm. to describe yourself, you talk about how you're a physician assistant, a mom, an exercise enthusiast, but also an adventure seeker. What would you say has been one of the greatest adventures of your life? Besides this business venture, I try to pick one thing every year that I've never done before, just as a challenge to myself personally. So a few years ago, I thought, well, I'm going to take a ladies handgun class and learn to shoot handguns and then join the ladies shooting league. And now I'm in trap league and, and things like that. So every year I just try to pick a new venture to grow myself personally and professionally. This past year with COVID, it was a little difficult. So I signed up for an online language course because a lot of my patients at one of my company are predominantly Spanish speaking. And I know just enough to get through a physical exam, but I really wanted to hone that. So that's what I've been doing this year. Well, last year carrying into this year. So hopefully I can find something this year that's a little more adventuresome than, you know, stay at home activities. But I think it's important to constantly challenge yourself and not just remain comfortable because that's how you grow as a person. 
Well, I thought you were an impressive person before, but now that I know that you're this expert marksman, Spanish-speaking oh. physician's assistant who's curing COVID, boy, oh boy, I feel like a schlub. No, no, no. You're what so have sweet. I done today? I don't know. I had a bagel and I sent out some emails. That's what I've contributed today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this was very enlightening, and I just want everybody to know, I mean, not this is why Alicia is such a respected person here in the halls of the Star Group. This is why she is one of our risk reduction services. So basically what that means is if you bless us with your business here at the Star Group, we will make somebody like Alicia available to you. So if you need uh, another reason to have your insurance looked at, if you need another reason to try to discuss risk reduction strategies, you're talking to a great one right here in Alicia Kelch, the founder and CEO, REM Occupational Health and Wellness. It was a pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you for the conversation. And again, keep up the great work you're doing. It's, It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words and for having me today. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Known with Paul M. Newberger. If you like our show and want to know more, check us out at stargroup.com. That's S-T-A-R-R group.com slash podcast. We're also available on Apple Podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts.